This is News 8 at 5. As we enter the next phase of California's tiered reopening plan, are San Diegans ready to start shopping? Good evening and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Steve Price. And I'm Alicia Summers. As some stores and shops begin limited reopenings with new health measures in place, News 8 wanted to know if people are confident enough to get back out there right now. We sent our Teresa Sardina out to find out. She has this report. There are so many places to visit in San Diego County and with Old Town being a popular spot for Mother's Day weekend, we stopped there and with great weather and beach access, we checked out Mission Beach and Pacific Beach. It's been a challenging few weeks for small businesses. It's about time. We've been there two months. California is moving into the initial stages of phase two. Governor Gavin Newsom's reopening plan is to allow local businesses to open its doors, allowing them to get on their feet. You'll see bookstores, florists, small retail and sporting goods stores offering curbside pickup and delivery only. Some are back in business at our local beaches. A look at Pacific Beach. The rule here is to answer you're supposed to have a face mask. Uh, we want you to use our hand sanitizer and keep six feet distance. As far as foot traffic goes, not a lot of people walking by, and most people are coming in for face masks, not necessarily what our main core is, which is funny socks. I've been here for 23 years, and I feel perfectly safe, and I admire the turnarounds that uh, the merchants have had to make and the skill and ability that they showed in doing it. In Mission Beach, Today is our first day of being open. The beaches opened up a couple weeks ago, but we waited for the county to specifically delineate our rental business. I'd like to see people come out here and enjoy the beach, get in the water, have some fun, get out of the house, spend time with their family and their friends, and uh, really just trickle some life back into this uh, community of fun. In Old Town, it is the opposite of what you would usually see on Mother's Day weekend. While restaurants are open for takeout and delivery, only a few shops reopen. On Friday, Governor Newsom teased phase three. Reopening of California could be one month away. The plan would include dining in restaurants, salons, and gyms. A message today from the governor's office states that as we're moving into phase two, modifying the stay home order, COVID-19 is still spreading. So in the meantime, we need to do our part and follow the safety guidelines issued by the public health department. Back to you. All right, Teresa, thank you. Now, here's the latest on coronavirus here in San Diego County. Health officials today reporting 114 new confirmed cases of COVID-19. Now, just 3% of the more than 3,400 tests performed came back positive. Total cases are now 4,776. Unfortunately, there were also six more deaths, so our death toll stands at 175. Encinitas officials warning that they could again close the beaches there after lifeguards reported a large number of people who are not following distancy rules. And also, Viejas Casino today announced that it is reopening on May 18th with a strict sanitation program in place and face masks and distancing required for employees and guests. And as of today, campgrounds are going to be allowed to open with local approval and safety rules in place, as will businesses that rent recreational equipment. Well, meantime, tonight there are more than 64,000 coronavirus cases across our state, an increase of more than 2,000 cases since yesterday. State officials reported 93 new deaths today for a total of just over 2,000 across the country. There are nearly 1.3 million confirmed cases and more than 77,000 deaths. And a San Diego company has been given emergency approval by the FDA for a rapid coronavirus test. Quidel recently developed its Sophia antigen test and says it delivers results in 15 minutes. The test uses sample swabs collected in a patient's nose or throat. Quidel says it's now shipping the rapid test to hospitals across the country and is accepting new orders. With stay-at-home orders starting to ease up, allowing for more San Diegans to go back to work, many parents struggle with what to do about child care. Local leaders teamed up with the YMCA to get its summer camp back open for families in need. News 8's Heather Hope has how the camp will work. With stay-at-home orders and schools closed, it hasn't been easy for parents in need of child care, desperately wanting to get their kids out of the house. So county leaders teamed with the YMCA of San Diego to talk safely getting summer camps back open. Um, I just took that Y survey this morning saying, please do open if you can do it safely. 
um, because we just need, we need to have space for our friends to run around. Getting the little ones out of the house as parents work from home can be a challenge, especially as students do distance learning. Four Zooms a day, so the only days I don't get to have, I don't have a Zoom on Sunday, Saturday, and Thursday. Little Luke, his mother Laura, and brother Beckett did a science project in Morley Field that sent their small rocket 40 feet in the air. All the way up into the sky. Luke has gone to YMCA camp two years in a row and could go again. We are moving forward with opening our summer camps uh, is an incredible process. County Supervisor Nathan Fletcher joined with local leaders at San Diego's Jackie Robinson YMCA to announce bringing summer camp to low-income families through a partnership with the San Diego Foundation, securing more than $11 million. Focused on food security, essential living expenses, and other emergent needs. This comes as the city and county will direct $10 million in federal stimulus funding to provide child care for essential workers during the coronavirus pandemic. That is a step. Today we're taking another step. So how will the summer camp safely work? We'll have smaller groups of campers. There'll be stabilized groups with no intermingling. The YMCA plans to open multiple sites across the county soon, as the summer program historically is the single largest provider of child care services during the summer. Disinfecting process and the enhanced hand washing stations, height and cleanliness protocol, and the health checks that we'll provide. Families simply need that. Father Jake Christensen supports a safe summer camp for his two boys. They're tugging at my legs when I'm trying to get some work done, <laughs> so it's a bit of a challenge. I think that's the biggest struggle that we're all feeling is we're trying to do too many things at the same time and feeling like we're not doing any of them very well. So it would be a huge blessing if the Y is able to reopen for summer camp. The details about how to sign your kids up for camp scholarships, the dates and locations are to be announced soon. New at 630, the activities parents are doing to keep their kids active in the meantime. Steve and Alicia. All right, Heather, thank you. In tonight's viewer poll, News 8 wants to know if you would consider sending your kids to a day camp this summer. Your options are yes, without question, you're going to send your kids to camp. No, don't really feel comfortable yet, or maybe, maybe wait and see a little bit longer. You can vote right now on cbs8.com slash vote, or you can vote, do so on our News 8 app, and we will leave this open throughout the newscast and check back to see what you guys are looking at. Well, after a scorcher all week, many parts of the county woke up to overcast skies. So the big question, what will we see now for the rest of the weekend? Let's check in with meteorologist Sean Stiles, who is actually here <laughs> back in our studio for the first time in, what, two months, Sean? Uh, it, it's, a, yeah. it is amazing, Steve. Two months. I left on a trip uh, off to do some skiing in France and Switzerland, and on the way back, everything went to hell in a handbasket with... Uh, everyone's sheltering in place today a pretty nice day here in San Diego we're looking at rainfall totals well above average and as far as our, our temperature today 73 68 the average for this time of year and as we take a look at this satellite loop I want you to look at all these clouds that are streaming up into the coastal area and then also coming back up from Mexico so we're seeing lots of activity across San Diego and the onshore flow very strong let me step out of the way here so you can see the three day forecast and you'll notice there are clouds in the forecast each and every day along the coastline but we stay above average and the thing that's happening in the East County right now is we're actually seeing some pocket sprinkles here or there. Not much of it's getting to the ground, but some of that Mexican moisture making its way up. So we'll stay above average and in the mid to upper 70s in the inland microclimates. I'll have your eight day forecast coming up in just a bit. All right, Sean, we'll see you then and welcome back. Tonight, new questions being raised about the Trump administration's internal response to the coronavirus crisis. A government scientist is speaking out as a third White House staffer has now tested positive for the virus. That happened today. Nicole Killian is in Washington with the latest. CBS News has learned the personal assistant of Ivanka Trump is among the latest to test positive for coronavirus. This after the vice president's press secretary, Katie Miller, was diagnosed. She thanked well-wishers Friday night, tweeting, I'm doing well and look forward to getting back to work for the American people. So she's a wonderful young woman, and today she tested positive. Uh, she hasn't come into contact with me. Miller is the wife of senior presidential advisor Stephen Miller. Earlier this week, a member of the president's personal military valet also tested positive. The White House insists it's taking precautions, but the vice president did not wear a mask during a trip to Iowa. 
The president didn't wear one either at a Washington ceremony for World War II veterans. The wind was blowing so hard in such a direction that if if the plague ever reached them, might be very surprised. Third, we need to conduct clinical trials to expand. After raising red flags about the administration's pandemic response, whistleblower Dr. Rick Bright spoke for the first time to 60 Minutes. The former vaccine Those official claims he was removed from his job for putting science over politics. Friday, a federal watchdog recommended he be reinstated. I'm the director of BARDA. To take me out of our organization focused on drugs and vaccines and diagnostics in the middle of a pandemic, the worst public health crisis that our country has faced in a century, and decapitate the BARDA organization to move me over to a very small, focused project of any scale, of any level of importance, is not responsible, didn't make sense. This week, the government started shipping remdesivir, but concerns have emerged that the drug cleared for emergency use in COVID patients has been slow to reach some hospitals. So right now, I think there's a lot of confusion of, of how to uh, distribute it. FEMA says the drug has already gone out to seven states, but the next round will be handled by the Department of Health and Human Services. The White House says task force member Dr. Deborah Burks will also help to coordinate. Nicole Killian, CBS News, the White House. Today, another North County city took steps to give its residents more access to beaches. Encinitas began allowing people to use stairways to get to the beach again today. This after the city began allowing more activities at Encinitas parks yesterday, reopening its basketball and tennis courts to the public. But skate parks and playgrounds are still staying closed for now. Friends and family hosted a walk by today for a very special person who's fallen on hard times. Donna Sue is a Navy veteran and a member of the only senior women's softball league in San Diego. Unfortunately, though, Donna has fallen ill with terminal cancer and she is now in hospice care. Now, since her teammates couldn't pay her a visit, they organized this, a socially distant walk by this afternoon to show her love during these difficult times. Stick around to meet the California infant who just became Gerber's newest spokesbaby. But first, we're showing you how San Diego breweries are staying afloat and keeping the taps flowing during the coronavirus crisis. And then our Marcella Lee is showing us an unexpected impact of the pandemic as we honor health care workers during Nurses Week. The health and safety of our local communities have always come first. And right now, we're all safer at home. But should you need a vehicle, we have options to shop online. And a participating dealer will deliver it right to you. And to ease the financial strain, you'll make no payments for 90 days. Together, we can create a safer, better car buying experience. Get 0% APR for up to 84 months on the 2020 Tucson and make no payments for 90 days. Visit HyundaiUSA.com today. Many in our community have lost their jobs and need help. There are programs available for everyday expenses like utility bills, even if you've never qualified before. Federal grants can pay up to $1,000 through the Low Income Home Energy Assistance Program or get a discount of 30% or more on monthly energy bills through the CARE program. To see if you qualify, go to 211sandiego.org or stge.com slash assistance. What is perfect? Families all together. Can we switch to GEICO, save money on our boat insurance? How can it get any better than this? Dad, I just caught a goldfish. There's no goldfish in this lake. Whoa. It's pure gold. We're going to be rich. We're going to be rich! <laughs> it only gets better when you switch and save with GEICO. Watch the News 8 Now updates and live stream on the CBS 8 app. Sponsored by Anderson Plumbing, Heating and Air. Don't forget to call Anderson to tune up your AC so you're ready for summer. Stay connected with News 8. Hey, Phil, San Diego's really pulling together.
Flowers were placed on the Hollywood Walk of Fame today to honor music legend Little Richard. His longtime agent confirmed the star's death this morning. The rock and roll pioneer sold more than 30 million records across the world after coming onto the music scene in the late 1940s, rising to stardom with hits that included Lucille, Good Golly Miss Molly, and Tutti Frutti. Little Richard was 87 years old. And master illusionist Roy Horn of Siegfried and Roy passed away in Las Vegas yesterday. And we're told it was due to complications related to coronavirus. He was 75 years old. Siegfried and Roy became world famous for using live tigers and other wild animals in their magic shows. Horn tested positive for coronavirus last month and had been hospitalized prior to his death. Feeding San Diego and the Labor Council are announcing that food distribution for families in need will continue this month. Starting today and every Saturday in May, volunteers will be at the SDCCU Stadium handing out food to the first 1,100 vehicles. They will start at 9 a.m. and go until all the food is gone. Today's food distribution went quick with more than 100 volunteers working to hand out the food. It's just a, a great match and it, it just goes to show um, really how compassionate our city is uh, helping others. Families in need will be able to show up next Saturday, the 16th, to get their food care package starting at 9 a.m. All right, Sean Stiles joining us back now in our studio today and picked a pretty good day to do it because, man, it started to get a little hot later in the day. I mean, it started out overcast, but then once those clouds cleared, Sean. Yeah, well, we, I've got the uh, the county temperatures coming up in the second half hour, Steve, and you'll be surprised how toasty it got up in the mountains, but I wanted to show you this image that was sent to us. I really like it because it makes you think, where is this spot in San Diego? Well, the tip is that it's in La Jolla Cove, but if I didn't have that, what a great shot, the waves crashing up on the rocks and all the cormorants there. Uh, and they nest just around the corner in the bluffs and cliffs up there. So if you ever want to check that out, it is really something special. Now looking at these temperatures around San Diego, as we look along the coastal strip, we're in the mid 60s. But as you get towards the inland areas, we're talking about temperatures into the mid 70s and out in the deserts. Yep, we're still in the low 100s out there. The mountains, though, in the mid 70s as well. Their daytime highs pushed into the 80s. Here's a live shot of our downtown skyline and downtown San Diego, where it is 72 degrees right now. The dew point at 59. The winds are out of the west at 7 miles per hour, so that's helping out things quite nicely. Now, we do have a strong onshore flow developing here, and with those strong onshore flows. Typically we get some pretty good westerly winds and that's going to be the case over the mountains and into the deserts, especially the downsloping winds. And then by the time we get to next weekend, slightly warmer. So we've got our eye on that. Check out this Doppler radar. I don't know if you've looked towards the East County, if you're along the coastal strip, some uh, thunderstorms popping up. And if you're in the East County, you know what I'm talking about. And as we put this map into motion, you can see that moisture streaming up for the north. Here's the cool down right here. And this is going to start to come into Southern California as far as the air mass. And we'll put this into motion for you. Let me step over here so you can see what I'm talking about. This whole mass is moving in. The amplitude of the jet stream goes away and we start to see that stronger onshore flow. That will be the case over the next couple days right on into the weekend. Surf wise, we're looking at some well, fun waves two to four feet, rip currents uh, moderate, and the tide high in the afternoon at 119. But it's coming from a negative tide there. Don't forget, to mother, tomorrow is Mother's Day, so if you haven't done something for mom, make sure you do it here. And then there's the cool down through the midweek, and then the warm up arrives again next weekend, even out in the deserts. We'll be back into the upper 90s.